Folks, we are back, and we are back in our respective homes. Yes. We're hopefully in your home, not physically, but in audio and video form. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't, Boo. what a segue. If you haven't subscribed to hear more of this audio and video form, do so here at the breakdown on YouTube. Audio pending. We're still working on the on the <laughs> audio. Working on it. On YouTube and Spotify, bro. We're working on it. But now that I'm back home, we are back. Maybe, episode 15. Maybe I'll be able to contribute a bit more. Oh, there we go. Sensei doing some back end work. Yeah, okay. man. I gotta stay busy somehow. All I've been doing is Director eating, bro. Sensei. All I have been doing has been eating. Non-stop. You're eating good, man. You're looking good. How how are you feeling after what everyone is now talking about, <laughs> which is your fight versus Kenny? We're back at home. It's been a couple days. Let's talk about it, man. We'll start there. How are you feeling after the fight with Kenny, man? I mean, I feel good. And before talking about the fight in general, just someone who's fought a bunch, um, different kind of fights, even if you win uh, – or lose, sometimes your body just ends up getting really beat up, especially doing MMA and kickboxing. Um, it feels yeah. like a car accident sometimes, uh, win or lose, depending on how the fight goes. So to be back and be healthy, be able to be working and not have like an eye shut and a broken nose and like body beat up, um, yeah, feels great. It feels super fortunate because the fight game is crazy. And you never yes. know, especially if you're talking the ounce of gloves we're using, we're talking about real danger. Um, so to come out being healthy is like, woof, you know, a big part yeah. of it. Uh, cause I don't have a layoff, you know, I was back to work Monday teaching full time, get, yeah. you know, catching up on everything. Um, but Listen, yeah, man. your, your haircut, you, your fade has a, has more of a cut than I think you received on your face at all. Talk about that fade, my man. Yee, I you know got that I, right before you fought. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I had, my barber was out, so I got it like a week before. Uh, but I just got a fade uh, yesterday. I, I landed and got gotta, okay. got another one, so I got cleaned up oh, it's again. It's shining right now, so I was making sure. But yes, okay, you you got out safely. You, you got back home to the kiddos in the gym. I'm sure they were hyped to see you again. Yeah, the uh, you know what's funny? The support was, was we were, amazing. Yeah, I was gonna say when we were in in London, like this was your whole demeanor all week. You were just so relaxed, calm. Like you you knew what was coming, but at the same time, you were just like, yeah, you know, it is it is what it is. But yeah. I talked to you, uh, I think it was Wednesday, and you're like, bro, I'm homesick. I just want to go back home and teach. <laughs> yeah, bro. It <laughs> it's was crazy. We were oh, man, being gone for a week. Um, and like uh, the dojo is number one, it consumes my mind yeah. the most. Um, then it's probably football. <laughs> And then it's like, then it's like, like my football. Then it's like content that I want to do, you know. And it's then like there's the like a few more things. Football, and then I may get punched in the face in a couple. Of days. Yeah. Then it's so like you know, like, like friends, Fortnite, you know. <laughs> Obviously, wait, wait, time out, time out, time out, real quick. Obviously, Alana, my fiance, is on the top of that. I was gonna Did say, put let's that make sure we put wifey in there. That was automatic. That was automatic. I was obviously I was starting from number that's, two. That's top, top. That's yeah, of course. Right, um, but then like after that was like preparing for a boxing match. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah. I got that yeah. thing. Um, so it's just as you get closer to fight night, it's just so consuming. Uh, not just time consuming, right. but like mentally. You're just thinking about visualizing game plan and just walking through it, walking through it, because you know you're going to this dangerous thing. So um, the classes were going on. Uh, I was checking in all the time, uh, following up with students and also my instructors to make sure the school didn't freaking burn down and people weren't quitting and classes were going well and kids weren't beating each other up, right? So um, right. so that part of it was like, okay. And it's, it's a whole week. So we're talking, that's like a, like a freaking six months, it feels like to me in the dojo. There's so much to do. Yeah. There's so much to do and prepare students for testing. We got testing next week, so um, yeah, I was just I did feel a bit homesick, ready to get back to back to life. Uh, but it, so it has been great uh, now that I touched down. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to talk about. We're gonna jump right into it. We might as well just jump right into yeah. it. Bro. Yeah. Let's do it, bro. So Let's obviously, do it. I know there's the decision, and uh, obviously, I got a chance to rewatch the fight. That's the difference now. A bunch of times, right? Okay. And rewatch the round. So the difference, obviously, instead of just a fresh reaction and thoughts, is I've got a chance to rewatch it, right? The scorecard has come out, and mm -hmm. I have some clips that I'm going to record too. I'm going to make a video about it. Um, I want to break down like this, the the combat side of it, like the punches, the things that I landed, things I was looking for. Yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what I want to do for my kind of fight reaction, my my fight reaction video. Um, but I was like, you know, 
that third judge, that was the thing that stuck out to me. I was like, wow. <laughs> wait, wait, which one? The one that said 10 10 round one? I was like, this guy just doesn't like me, dude. He must <laughs> is is it a Puerto Rican thing, bro? Is it like what's going on? Is it an American thing, bro? <laughs> like honestly, I wasn't even like mad. I was just like, this seems a little odd. Like not one round? Like not even one? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like I would think that the fourth round seemed more like a more of a tie than the first round. Right. Right, like no, 100%. the fourth seemed more like a tie, like it can go, you know. And the fourth was the closest round. Yeah, so like to me, I'm like, in terms of being generous, but I was like, wait. Then the third round, he said that I lost. So I was, yeah. I was like, wait, which was shocking. I was like, wait a second, time out a second, you know. And um, what was interesting is that when I, you know, you know, when you're fighting, it's like, especially in, in when you're like yeah, under the lights and you're fighting you have like memory loss almost. It's hard to remember how things right. go. So I'm going to give it to the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to be like, okay, I know what I felt. But, but before I talk about that, I just remember going, okay, I need to rewatch it. And I thought that when I rewatched it, I was going to get a different perspective than what I remember. I thought I was going to be like, oh man, maybe I, I didn't do that. I didn't do this. And when I rewatched it, I was like, wait, I scored more than I remember. Yeah, yeah. So when I actually rewatched it, I felt like I actually did better than what I thought because of obviously the decision. And then I was, you know, second guessing myself. Was I, did he really land that much? Was he really pushing me back with his jab, right? So um, when I rewatched it, I was like, no, actually it was what I felt like in the ring. And it's obviously it's tricky because boxing, you know, different rule sets and, and different like combat. You know what I mean? Like as a, as a martial artist and someone who teaches martial arts and self-defense, like when you're in there, I'm, you're just going based off instincts. And when it comes to like combat, the object is to, especially like a, a sport is to score and not be scored on. Right. And, and you, and you, and when you're training, sparring, whatever, uh, fighting, you have like this mental scorecard. You kind of know when you're scoring more and when you're not. You know when you can feel like if you're ahead, unless it's just like an all-out brawl and you're like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you can't tell, right? But you right. can tell that we were – it was more of a chess match, and I felt like I was up on the chess match. Like like round one, I was like, I uh, definitely won that. Second round, yeah. I know I'm ahead. So I'm, yeah. he's probably going to come forward and try to score. I'm going to try to counter him. Didn't really work that well in the second round. Didn't have my timing well. He came out a little bit faster. I was a little bit too comfortable. And I was like, okay. So I knew third round, I got to make gotta it. Go get it. I got to go get it. Went and got it. I, yeah. I, I remember I, I got, obviously there was not much going on in the beginning of the third. Um, but then I found my opening with, I think it was actually within the first minute or so. And then after that, uh, circled. And then I, ca- I had a nice body hook, a left hook to the mm-hmm. liver, um, attempted power shots uh, as well. Um uh, Felt like okay, third round. So I'm like, I'm up two to one for sure. Like going into the fourth, I was like, yeah, right. I'm up. He's got to come get this. Like he's got to come yeah. get this. I know. I, yeah. I, so I felt that. And in the beginning of the fourth, which I forgot, I landed uh, like three counter punches. So uh, if the mm-hmm. if, if you look at the highlight, the the video that the zone posted um, of our fight, they reposted the mm-hmm. full fight. The first highlight that they showed at the end of it was a was a counter hook over his jab. Yep. Um, and I was like, what round was that? And it was, I didn't know that was the fourth round. It was the fourth. Yeah. So it was the beginning of the fourth. I landed, I think I scored like three times. I countered the jab a couple of times. Um, and then we kind of moved around, but, and I remember in my head, like, okay, the, the fourth round has begun. I've scored. I'm up. Mm. Let's see if he's going to come try to come get it. I'm going to try to right. counter him. He's going to have to come forward because I'm up two to one and I'm up right now. You just you right. feel like you're playing from ahead. I was playing from ahead, you know, yeah. and then I was countering. So and it was working. So I I know like the the whole addressing the whole thing like the killer spirit and moving forward. And obviously I wanted to do that. Um, but the thing is, what I the the countering uh, worked. Mm-hmm. So I'm in there off instincts. So it's working. I'm not gonna just. Why would I go for broke at this point if I'm up? In my head, you know, like, right. based off combat. I've cracked him. Right. This is working. He's trying to jab. I'm defending it, but he's not. Uh, he was jabbing, but not following up. So I'm like, okay. Right. Then I would wait for him to jab again and counter it. I would jab. I would block. Jab. I would block. Counter, and then move again. 
So I'm like, he's not going to do much else. There's no, there's, he's taller. There's no need for me to rush in. Um, so right. I he's think he's not going to initiate that offense any more than you were. So why? Correct. And I, the, I think one of the issues was is because I already was scoring and I felt like I was ahead. That was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. I that was, was the big. I think if I was f- fighting I from behind, it would have been. You know, when I when I was behind, like I felt in the second round, like it was tied, I went and got it. You know. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought too. I, you know, the biggest thing, and, and you know, Brian is one of those guys that was talking about. You know, True Jordy was saying, you know, I don't know if he's got that that dog killer instinct type thing. I think, I, and I was just like, I think that, you know, legitimately, since they thought he was winning that fight, and yeah. I was like, you know, if there's one thing that I know he'll go back and and think about, it's like, man, you know. I probably shouldn't have scored it in my head while it was going on, or I probably shouldn't have thought about like who's ahead at this point. But it's it's so hard not. Yeah, but it's not even. It's so hard it to wasn't act like. You're, but it wasn't like I was like, oh, was it? I am I up? It's just that when you, let's say you're sparring somebody, and you're having you success, know you right. just know you're winning, right? You know what I'm saying? Like so you, you're like why? Yeah. Like and it also, it's not like you're being scored. So like sparring is different. You're trying different things. But like right. you know, if you're sparring, you can tell is this even or I'm. I'm, I'm winning. Or am I getting the better of it? Yeah. And if it's right. if it's defense first is winning. Like I, right. I was having That's another thing. I was if you remember, I remember clearly I was not having a, a lot of I wasn't having as much success being first. Yep. I was all my success I think that was, was the, being second and I landed big shots being second. So I was like, okay, this is I'm the, this is working. My like it, right. it wasn't like a huge thought process, but it's just training for a long time instinctually. When something freaking works, you're going to keep doing it. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You're not going to be like, no, change it up. There was nothing I needed yeah, exactly. to change. So uh, going into the fourth, I remember like I scored and then I was defending. But it felt like in my head I was like uh, I wanted him to come forward. It was a kind of this this bait and switch thing. I was like, come forward because I'm going to try to hit you again. But he didn't want right. to press forward. And it didn't feel like right. I was being – like when they talk about it, the interesting thing like dictating pace – it, that was the, the main tagline and like used pressure. by the PBA, by the way. The, yeah. The, the, the governing body, when they put out, and they put out this long it, like Instagram story, or no, 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 it was an Instagram post, and the, the whole basis for giving Kenny, and I, by the way, I do want to say this, yes, Kenny has, has won the fight, and we understand that. We're not here to, to be, to, to have sour grapes about it. It's just, a, it's just, it's just, you know, getting Sensei's thoughts on what he thought, and, and you know, my perspective, I had sour grapes. I ain't going to lie to you. At, as the fight ended, I had some sour grapes. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I was ringside. I think you heard about it, me being all upset about it. But at the end of the day, you know, you go back and watch it. The decision is what the decision is. We're just looking at it, you know, from guys that really do love the sport. And we're like, oh, you know, it's, it's cool to go back and look in little X's and O's and see, okay, well, is this judging correct or not? Regardless, obviously, Kenny wins this fight. Fair play to him. And I'm super excited for what Kenny does next. I, I respect the hell out of him, especially, you know, we, we'll talk about it in a little bit. He fought with a broken nose. That's fucking crazy to me. Um, you know, that's wild to, to, and, and I don't know, you know, the residual effects of a deviated septum type deal, but hopefully he's, he recovers well, but the explanation was worse than a decision. In my opinion, when you start talking about dictating pace as a round winner, and disregarding the damage being done in said rounds to just say, can he dictate a pace? But you're not going to talk about the damage that was done. The, the scoring criteria in boxing and from the PBA's own fa- like rule book, clean shots, effective yeah. aggression. What does effective aggression mean? It means being aggressive, but also landing effective shots with aggression. Aggression for aggression's sake is nothing, or at least it's not that tier of scoring. It's the next tier, which is ring generalship. Right. Right. And then you had defense as well. But yeah, dictating pace, I didn't quite understand. And I would like, an, like, if I were in the room, I'd be like, what does that mean? Right. What What is dictating pace? Because technically you could say, and, and not to be this guy, but you could say that you dictated pace. Yeah. Because I want to, I'm, what I'm saying is that he was fighting at my pace. Right. That's like, you could, uh, dictating pace doesn't mean, you know, standing in the middle he, of the well, like he wasn't forcing me to the like, he wasn't like i didn't feel like like when i was in there i didn't feel like i was being being forced to box faster than i wanted to right it wasn't like there was something that kenny was giving you to make you do something different right you were yeah. just doing and i think what that's p- done. part of the way it looks because since the counter thing was working it looks like i'm i'm waiting but i'm mm-hmm. but if i'm like in my head like 
you know, it's, it's a round. You got to score points. This is right. like any other sport. I score. He has to come score. Right. So, okay, I'm going to try to draw him out, you know, and look for counters. And then, um, right. and at times too, I, cause it, when I remember it, cause the dictating pace and like the pressure thing in my head, I was like, I felt like, I remember feeling like I was the one who was actually going for the big shots and was attempting right. to create, um, uh, situations where we're going to battle because I to create damage where right. I was because I would throw my backhand or like lunging hooks for example where I would try to close the gap and I felt like there was a kind of like um, what I remembered was like back and forth for example if I threw a lunging leg hook he would jump out of the way if I threw a right hand he was jumping out of the way and we would kind of like bounce from the center to the right side then he would take the center and then I would try to draw him out again because when I went to go first he would completely exit so if he's exiting I'm going first let me see if I can draw him in. He's got an 80-inch reach, right? Which is nuts for his size, by the way. Insane, <laughs> like, right? To have an 80-inch reach at 5, I don't think he's, what, 5'11", 5'10", yeah. maybe? Like, that's crazy. And I, and it wasn't like when he was, uh, like, I remember in the ring, like, when he was throwing punches, it was a lot of it on the end. He didn't want to commit because I was trying to counter. You know, so it wasn't, exactly. it wasn't like, I know, like. Smart strategy by him, by mm-hmm. the way. And I, and I think, obviously, the I think one of the issues is the expectation that people had of the fight and me, obviously, because I said I won a war. So they're like, <laughs> since they didn't push, but I was like, but he, but it, I'm like, but wait, I know that, but it wasn't like he was pushing either. Yeah. And that's like the, when that's you look at it, you know, we get to that so point. I was like that, yeah. that part of the judging, I was like, wait, I was like, I thought, you know, I was like at the end of the fourth, I came forward. Um, right. You know, created that exchange at the end there, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that exchange would have happened if I didn't come forward, right? So th- there was some See, exchanges. That's the hard part is when we talk know? about like dictating pace, it's like, you know, if Kenny doesn't go first in some of those instances, and you, like you said, the moments you did go first, and Kenny had somewhat of a, a reaction to, to, you know, get out of range, which is smart. You know, you don't want to take those shots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was going to be that fight that it was just two dudes standing there, right? Or almost nothing like the moments we saw almost nothing is like when Kenny didn't want to go first and when you would go first and nothing would come of it yeah it was just like you said a teeter-totter we were just moving around the ring at that point but yeah and that's what I thought in the I scoring guess, I'm like I didn't get any credit for attempting to go forward because I did go forward um right I would lunge forward that's the, that's often the too it's just because I didn't do it from the center of the ring that whole center of the ring thing creates a an interesting point of view that like, like obviously when I'm fighting, I'm, that's not something I'm really thinking of. Of that's the weird, interesting thing. as a martial artist. I'll tell you is like when we're talking about combat, like yeah. your location means nothing to me. So like, yeah, obviously yeah. in boxing yeah, it's important, that's the, but that's one of those things that like where it's important in boxing. Obviously, like Muay Thai may be more important because like the rule set. But yep. if I can pull you out here to to crack one on you. Right. Then it doesn't really, you know what I mean. That I'm not trying to like prove, to show the judges that I'm, I'm the one in control. I'm just focused on on, yeah, on, the, on the combat part of it, you know. Right. It, it maybe the honestly, and and we don't know obviously now what they were thinking at the time, but maybe the, the I don't want to even say that Kitty was posturing, but maybe to the judges, you look at a guy that that is, you know, I'm I'm standing here in the center, and the posture of it is maybe what they see. I I don't know. Yeah. But, Definitely. I like I like your take on it is like, you know, we're looking at the combat side of things and maybe what they saw was the posture of the things in between the combat. That's that's the only thing I could I could maybe give and say, okay, that, you know, that makes sense. There's one guy that's on the ropes and there's another guy that's not. And, and that's the thing the, too. The, the I was way. I my back touched the ropes maybe like twice. So like yeah, when I was, and I think one of them was your own doing. Like correct, went there. Purposely. I'm trying to get there yeah. for him to come forward. So like the 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 yeah. ropes thing. There was never a time where I was. Uh, there was never a time where I was actually like pushed back. Right. With I I would step back because I like for let's say that's like one instance one exchange. I would step back because I'm setting because I'm looking to counter. So I'm either stepping back, stepping back, and then looking to counter. And the last thing I think I remember is, like, uh, how did I feel, like, right after the fight? Um, the reason I felt good about, like, the performance. Bro, I turned around. I turned around, and, and the beta squad was sitting behind me. And shout out to, to Chunks and, and Nico and Shark and, and AJ. I turned around and went, nah, you know what I actually did? I kind of felt like an, I was trolling them a bit. I went, 
four zero. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I just play with him. Yeah. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, I, I, I think it's three one. Like I, I, in my mind, I was like, okay, since they won one three, and at the time watching it in person, I was like, he definitely won four. And I, you know, since I've watched it back, and I'm like, okay, you know, I can see yeah where you could give Kenny four, but I would still probably lean three one to you, but. I, I was convinced. I was like, that's that's an easy three one to sensei, in my opinion. And then obviously that's I think that's why I was like shocked so much when I heard the when I heard the score out. Yeah, and like mentally uh, the thing that I thought about like uh when I'm like reviewing my own performance, even like after the decision was made, like and the end of the fight, like, okay, the fight's done, like how do you feel? You know? Like yeah, I, yeah. I didn't have any doubt in terms of my performance. I understand scorecards, right. so I'm like I'm gonna be I'm I'm as clueless as everybody here. Like, I, I'm expecting anything. Yeah. So I was already like, I'm not like, yeah, the judges are definitely going to give me the win. So I never, right. but like, in terms of my performance, I felt like, okay, his, he was throwing the jab, but I defended the jab in uh, more than he landed, and I countered more, the jab more than he landed. So like his jab that he was, the jab that he was using, I had defended it and countered it, because that's where my offense came from, um, more than he landed it. Yeah. You know, everything yeah, came off the, of that. And that was the big thing that was supposed to have won him rounds was the jab. And if you're going to – and, again, I, this is not any, like, shots or whatever at them, but if you're going to convince me that, like, that was winning rounds, you're going to have to tell me how. Because being parried doesn't win you rounds. Like, just pumping it, just using your jab with no effect, right, the effect of aggression doesn't win you rounds, in my opinion. I think defending yeah. a jab, countering a jab – those things win you rounds, but if you're throwing it just to throw it, again, I guess again it, it would be have to it have to be like posturing or aggression, and yeah. the judge, which it was, is what they said. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I I, I fair play to him because it was, that was a sound strategy to keep you off him. You know. Yeah, and and uh, my funny because Coach Tang, uh, Michael Tang was like, dude, he was Coach Tang he was, was on screaming. it, and he was on it because he it. he had he had had said that because at the end of the fight he was like pissed. Cause he yeah. was like, they're gonna take it from you. Like he, he's from. Yeah, no, you know what's funny? He's from the, the Olympic round, committee. I kept hearing him go, "I need activity. I need activity." Yeah, because he's on the. He's on the. He he was a national champion three times, and he was a part of Team USA and Olympic committee. So he's seen it yeah. all. So he was like, "Uh, like they're gonna, you know." He did, he just felt like yeah. whatever, and because he was yeah, saying he's like, um, like he said, activity or like don't let him take the center, and I'm like. Yeah, uh, I'm doing great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm doing awesome. But honestly, here, though, you know? the fact that the fact that Coach Tang knew kind of what the judges were looking for was probably a good indicator as to how like yeah. And I don't know if he was telling you this between rounds or I just heard it in the corner like yeah. No, round. it was it was in the round. Yes, I think fourth yeah. as well. And so when he started when he started yelling, it was so funny. I, I was listening in. I would just scream the same shit he was yelling. <laughs> I was like, Tank Center!" <laughs> as soon as he would yell it. But no, the fact that he knew that is an indicator, yeah. right? Because he has dealt, like you said, with so many commissions in, in different sports and like in, in the Olympic Committee. Like w whether or not that we agree with the judging of how you know the scoring system tiers work with the PBA, right? The judges were looking for something specific, and Kenny gave them what they were looking for. Not like oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, UK, US. It was just the style in which Kenny fought with was something that they, I guess, valued more than the damage and the style. And I wonder I guess, that. I know people talk about the home court thing, but that's an interesting thing, right? Like the home court, because like if it was in the U.S., does it happen? Like if Kenny's not on home, you know what I'm I saying? Just, I don't it, know. I would even say it's a U.S., U.K. thing. I think it's more of an amateur and pro thing. That's what I look at it as. Like, Okay. If this was a pro bout and pro judge, like professional – not because uh, these are technically professional judges, but judges that judge professional boxing, would this have been scored the same? And I don't think so. No. Yeah. I think cause, that you would have easily gotten a 10, eight and one. And I think you probably would have won three, maybe four. Yeah. And I wonder because I, the, the, like, obviously the crowd has something to do with it. Like when they're making yeah. like the way yeah, they do course. things. And I, and I've wondered that because obviously I don't have like my experience in combat is local. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't, like, and this was my first full contact boxing match. The one with PJ, I'm not going to call that full contact. So, that wasn't even full contact with overflow. Yeah. Like, this was my first full contact uh, boxing match. Ten Un ouncer. Ten ounce. Gear, under yeah, under this rule set, like, boxing. Right? It's different. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
yeah, that part was weird. And then I thought, man, I wonder. It, it did feel like that, though. I must say it did feel like that. That's what it felt like personally mm-hmm. when the score was called because one of my initial thoughts were, hey, if we just flip performances. I'm, do you get that same call? I, would I win? Like if I you fought that, if yeah. I if I fought Kenny the way that he fought me, just flip literally same people, same place, just you get cracked in the first fl- ten, flip the performance, a even bit, third. Yeah. He makes a rush at me. Crowd goes crazy in the third. Right, he's right. landing shots. He's moving around the edge. And would the narrative have changed? Um, and would they have good point. Would they have given me? Because that's what it, I was. That's what it it felt like. It's like. Be, you know what I mean? Just, just the no, yeah. And then the you, verbiage. You, obviously, it's yeah. In the thing, it, it, it kind of really felt like, too. um, it felt like Sensei did, but a lot of Sensei, but yeah. So and obviously they're they're already defending their decision at that point, so they're trying to make they're making their case for that why they did that. Like it looked like a, a defense of the decision versus an actual like analytical breakdown of the decision. That's what I read out of it when it was like, here's the criticism that we got. This is how we defend the criticism, not this is how we defend the decision, the decision itself, you know? Yeah, and I... And I and That's what it sounds I don't know. And also, I don't know if it's just... I mean, I think we... One of the things for boxing, this is like another great point, is I'm like, man, I wish the scoreboard would just be... Like, why can't they just throw the scoreboard? Why can't I it know. be digital? This is, this is a big deal with combat sports. I would love round-by-round round scoring, like live round-by-round round scoring. Because I would like to look up and be like... Wait, I'm losing? Like, oh shit, I'm down there. Or like what four, the hell? Like I tied round, that it's round, round, yeah. round four, it's losing. Or like round one, that was a yeah. draw. Hold up. Yeah. Then you know what they're looking for. Yeah. You know? Combat sports is the one sport uh, among many that doesn't have live scoring. And it's a real problem. And, and I know in, in MMA, some guys like it, some guys don't. But I, I genuinely think, yeah, you should fight your fight regardless. You should fight like you're trying to win at all points. But... It is a strategy to try to, you know, yeah. you are down. Okay, listen, we got to put, we got to place the foot down on the pedal. Yeah. If we're up, we can afford to take less risks. And, and, you know, yeah, that might not be the most entertaining sometimes, but dude, Floyd Mayweather made a living out of doing that for, for, for the, the yeah. Money Mayweather years, right? That's another thing, too, that we could talk about that would be scored differently as a pro. How many times was, was Floyd a front foot fighter in those last seven to eight years, you know, and not, center of the ring but mostly on his back foot you know slipping shots and banging behind those and he was a counter fighter at that yeah point, scoring you know? scoring his his clean shots and then getting up out of the round you know right money so, mayweather 101 you know it is like, and this is I a testament this is day, a testament honestly i was like this is a testament to daily uh because yeah he he knew, he knew. and it's like when they talk about it's not rigged like he's been in the game he knows yeah boxing the judging the scoring you know and and yeah. obviously he's gonna lean towards it like like the temper one he thought he knew and then they changed that one right so it's like okay right right you know what i mean obviously ev- everything's always different because it's like he thought he did enough yeah. and then it turns around they rescored it and it's four to one you know we looked at gib right. same thing score happens and then they redo it so um yeah. i'm like do they have separate judges rescore it or do they like what do they do like they have separate judges to watch yeah, I don't it know. I, it's a weird you know, we're you talking know? about we're talking about uh, you know commissions that aren't necessarily very heavily regulated here so it's not like we have any kind of way of knowing how they're going in and rescoring this or like fuck this dude i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to deal yeah, with yeah, yeah. Here. yeah 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 it could be that you know but i think you're right i think daily knew coming into that especially after the first round right especially once there and, and it wasn't even that kenny opened up it's that you kind of shocked him with that right hand right it wasn't like yeah. He might have overextended a bit on his jab, but you just kind of shocked him, right? You you moved in, good yeah. slip on the inside, and banged the right hand. At that point, I, I want to say that I heard this, and I could be wrong, that on commentary they said that <laughs> Daly slapped him. Slapped I thought I heard something like that, hard. like, don't let it happen again or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he was on him, right? At, at that point, yeah. he knew, okay, listen, there's, there's a couple things that can happen here. One, we've lost that round pretty convincingly. For the next three... And I can remember him. Jab, yeah, he told. Yeah, he he, he, he told ringside. him that he lost round one. Yeah, no, he was honest with him, straight up. Yeah, like, yeah he was like, yeah, you know. I, you, you but he did say, round. but the the but, end of the way you finish the round, if you do that, exactly, yeah, you're gonna win. Um, the yep, next, the next, the, the, however many. Now yeah. do that, and we'll be good. And and that's what he did. He he got on the jab and, and yeah. started to to front foot, and that that was it, man. And fair play, like. 
another thing we you know we we haven't talked about, but I think we've talked about separately is anyone else outside of maybe you know a couple of fighters on that card take that right hand from you. Who I know, bro. I'm like, yo, night. Kenny's got. He's been training. That that is a it, ch- ch- chin. Chin bro. solid. There was a couple shots too. The and the mindset. That right hook again. Too, the left like, hook. It was a left hook that I caught. Um, yep. And the right hand that was sneaky. It didn't look like you landed it because it was like a you, you kind of fell over. He tripped you or something. But the, I'm like, did that even count? In right hand because too. I landed a, another power I know, shot. I don't think it did because the moment, the moment somehow went to Kenny there because you stumbled a bit and people like cheered like you I was like I just down. land I, like, no, he landed I just landed right a hand. lead right hand off his temple I was like boom so I was like <laughs> I was like wait did so that's the thing those are the tricky things where it's like I this is what I feel like I'm landing like boom I land that shot okay right like this is de- like no, I mean, no question back, this is my round you know so it's hard yeah, no. like thinking like, cuz you know like you me and Kenny know what's happening we feel right. the shots. We feel what's hitting, what's not. Was that jab scored? I, I I know it wasn't. Right. You know? Does does you know what I mean? There was right. no damage done, but does it look like there was? If I take it off the glove here. So that's the other part of like not knowing where where it's like, yeah, I'm I'm good, you know. I'm chilling. Well, I mean think I think, you know, Kenny didn't if I'm cor- I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Kenny didn't even know if he had won that fight. No, we we thought it was a picture that have come out now. He thought it was a yeah, draw. Yeah, he thought it was a draw. Well, because right. when I so, I and thought that's, that's a that's yeah. a, not a bad assessment to be honest. No, I thought I had won, and then when I heard the first uh, score, I went. I looked at him, and I I kind of like touched him. I was like, "They're gonna do it again, bro." And he was like, "Like it's gonna be another like weird score." And he goes, "Oh my god!" Yeah. And I, and I go, "It's probably gonna be a draw." When I heard the second one, he's like, "Yeah, it's probably gonna be a draw." And he's like that, and I and I remember thinking, when "I heard thirty nine, okay. thirty seven. I thought you'd won." I was like, yeah, 39, yeah. 37 makes sense. Mm-hmm. Me too. You know? I, that's what I was like. Okay, that that was my and that was my feeling. And I was like, I was like, okay, he's you know they gave him one too many rounds, but since they still got this majority decision, W, we're going home, you know. And then when they said it, I was like, oh no. So yeah, it was it was a tough it was a tough one. Yeah. Like I I took it harder than you did though. You handled it with all class, man. But yeah, it's because I mean yeah, the no, performance. Listen. I felt good about the performance, and I knew. Like, uh, you know, there's so many thoughts and things going into fighting, you know, that go into a camp. So to finish a fight, uh, number one, and to feel like you did well, I've been out, I've been out for a while. Um, my last one, I my last combat thing I lost, you know, I got, I got TKO'd with a, with a liver kick to the body. Um, I got, I got, I got freaking pieced up pretty good. So. To feel like I did well and I competed and I, you know, um, felt like I did a good job defensively and offensively. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, these three, the three guys over here don't believe so, but, you know, but <laughs> everybody else uh, feels good about it, and so do I. So that's good, you yeah. know. No, you can take that away from it, man. And I think, you know, of course, and I said this on Twitter. You know, you've inspired so many people for so many years, and I think all those people, shit, man, myself included, that grew up with you as their sensei, they, they were all they all had your back. And it, and I wanted to say this too, and I guess I'll ask you now, man. I, I didn't want to, you know, I guess I got to bring it up. Is uh, is this the last ride for Faye Sensei in the in the ring? As as of now, yes. But remember, I, just so you know, three years it, ago, it can always change, baby. It can always change. Literally three years ago, this is what I said, yeah. and I was actually, um, to be honest, I was more convicted in it then. When I said I was done I think, three years ago, yeah. I was a little bit more. You were like, I'm done, done. Oh, bro, I was so done, and it was even after. I obviously it was a loss. It was even after that, though. Uh, for like a few years, like even up till last year, like we're talking end of last year. You just didn't get that feeling. You were like, when they were asking me back. again and I'm like, no, 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 nope, nope, nope. Yeah. I told people exhibition charity. I'll do exhibition for like something that's not, um, uh, that I don't really have to prepare for. Um, right. because it just, it was, I didn't want, my life is going so well. Everything in my life has got to change, you know? And that's, what's the hardest part. Fighting is one thing, but the preparation that you have to do, when someone is serious, I know Kenny's taking it serious, so I can't be messing around. It's not just some sparring thing. I Kenny's can just, taking it so serious. I can't just fly there. Bro. I know right away. 
dude. Yeah. I'm like, okay, bro. He was like, let's get that rematch. He's but he's in full, and this is what I love about Kenny. He's in. I, I talked to Nico um, for probably an hour after the fight, and he was just so confused as to why I thought you won. And we we talked about it. And Nico and all those guys, man. I know you know I'm probably not their favorite person because I rocked with you so heavy, but I tried to remain as unbiased as I could. You know, yeah, 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 of but course. I, I love all those guys over there, and Nico was was uh, was saying he was like, Kenny wants the rematch right away. He's like, he wants it. He he he's been locked into this boxing thing, and I was like, I know, man, I can see it. Like, yeah, the way that I'm locked into YouTube and, and this whole deal, like. Kenny and, and guys like Gibb too, and, and some others have just been solely focused on this. And I love to see it because the levels are rising so quickly. So yeah, it's only yeah, it means it means only good things way. for the the platform and the the thing that we love, you yeah. know, the YouTube boxing thing. But but yeah, for That's me it. fighting again, man, I tell you, I told I told them I was back there with team, um, with team Kenny and, and Deji and them, um, and they were asking yeah, me the yeah. same thing. I said, listen, guys, between between us right here and I, which is now everyone because I'm doing a video yeah. I was like your boy was uh, I was out the game I was done yeah but then your boy was broke okay so <laughs> okay I was like the, 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 this is before the breakdown the views at my channel was it wasn't going great you know I was like freaking hey but listen I was like KSI the views are back on the main channel I was like, now baby KSI took a hiatus freaking Jake Paul also was done so I'm like Right. Uh, hello. What we doing? So then they offered me a bag that I couldn't refuse. And then I, and then initially I was like, man, if they offer me another bag, maybe I could do it. And then I told them there, I said, actually, I think it's going to have a reverse effect. And I think it was Calvin. Cal, <laughs> Calvin started dying. He's like, yep, I know what you're saying. They gave you, they're going to give you just as so much money for you not to want to get off the couch again. <laughs> I'm like, because now that I'm not going to be broke. Then I have yeah. no reason to get off the couch again to go out there in the exactly. ring. I was like, that's the only reason it took me out. So now I'm like, I, I so I've, I've, I've been telling people, I've been telling my fiance, I was saying, people have asked me the only, the only chance you have of seeing me again, probably is if I go broke again or if I'm poor, because then I'm probably <laughs> going to fight again. <laughs> if, okay. All right. Breakdown pod listeners come like, we don't want to do this to my boy, man. We we gotta grow this podcast because I can't see my man going out broke like this. And <laughs> the views start going down, dislikes just to get me to fight life. again. People just start unsubscribing to yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the breakdown loses all momentum. <laughs> you go under five, like it's just the whole thing. Tomorrow I lose verification. No, I lose verification. Everything just goes backwards. Oh then I, then I get a text from no, him. Hey, listen. Hey, you want to fight again? Here's a. <laughs> Just capital Y E S. That's yeah. It. That's like so there's your answer. <laughs> Name it. Yeah. But no, man. Yeah. Listen, we don't. We obviously don't want that. And li we saw the last video with you and Kenny. Pop, 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 popped off, son. So yeah. You are fully back, ready. And the breakdown. Listen, we're growing, man. We're, we're yes. about to start NFL football season, and we're gonna talk oh, about all that yeah. as we start up. But before we get into any of that stuff or, or any of the the football talk, let's talk about the rest of the card, man. Because you were on a stacked card here. Yes. And I want to know your standouts on the night, right? Who do you think leaving this card are the biggest names in YouTube boxing? Well, one, you have uh, – I think being an underdog and the upset is the the most important thing. So Slim and Deji. Okay. Uh, Slim and Deji, both massive performances. Yes, and I think Slim was the – you know, it, it was the biggest upset. Slim was the big winner. The big winner. Of yeah, the because sure. it was short notice superstar. and it was just a big, you know, big punch, a big, a big finish. Um, my heart freaking obviously broke Bro, for I didn't Tommy. Tell you this. Oh my God. Listen to what happened today. I, I recorded a video with Tommy today. You did? Um, yeah, for his channel. I, I think it'll be out by now, so I don't think they'll mind me saying this. We recorded like you know how I do my breakdowns, which I'm still gonna do my breakdown of the fight. Yeah. We watched the fight together and we kind of broke it down. Oh wow. And yeah, it was super dope. Tommy was, you know, it's it's kind of it's always tough to watch that with someone that has yeah, on man. the losing in, you know? Yeah. And uh he he had said he'd already watched it back, but you know what he said? And I think you told me this on fight night. Not an excuse at all, by the way, because Slim had a just a masterful performance and he 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 executed it in in one specific place that I thought Tommy was really weak in and we'll talk about it in a second. Mm -hmm. But 
you told me, you know, that you had heard when Tommy watched your fight, and Wally said the same thing to me, Tommy's coach, he was like, Tommy, like everything about Tommy just left him at that point. Yeah, he got he deflated. He got deflated, they said. And, and I asked Tommy about it today, and he goes, dude, I just got so angry. He was like, I was so angry. He's like, I had felt like, you know, we were back in that situation that I was already in, you know, a couple months back. Yeah. And he was like, I, I just lost my head a little bit. He's like, I, I, did, I wasn't myself. I didn't, I just wanted to go on and just destroy Slim. And because of it, I, I fought in a way that I felt like it wasn't me, you know, and he wasn't, again, using it as an excuse, but it was, it was definitely something that entered his mind. And, and listen, we all have heard stories about, you know, MMA guys that are fighting on the same car. They see their buddy get knocked out. It's never a good thing. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, Slim, Slim had a masterful performance though. Let's talk about what you thought he did well in that fight. He, he came in, he had a game plan. He executed it. And also he took some shots on the way in. I, the thing is he had the, he doesn't, like one of the things that I thought initially heavy clinch on that game plan, heavy clinch. Yeah. Is that he's uh, like, he's a rangy guy. So this is out of style for him. Wasn't his. Yeah. I've never seen him clinch like that. I've never seen Correct. him try to work inside like that. So that was the part that I was like, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to execute the game plan that he needs to, or that he should do that would be effective against Tommy. I'm like, I don't know if his style has that. I'm not sure. If he's, and so, so to see him have the guts to go into the fire there, to, to try to yeah. find his way in, to stick his head in there, to stick his nose in there, um, and to get in the fire and to risk his own chin um, was yeah. the part that I was like, oh, he's he's going for it. And he's, he's a dog. Go- and he's going for it in the right way. Um, and even sacrificing his gas tank because he was out of shape. So for him to push forward say. and clinch – he couldn't have done that for much. He, it was a, he it was needed to do it when it happened because it wasn't going to. Yes. He was going to be done and like yeah. physically. And I think he knew that. I think he knew that too. Like that was obviously the game plan for a reason. They, you know, we made a lot about the two weeks notice, you know, for Slim. And it's a, it's a real thing. You know, even if he was training, he wasn't training for a fight, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. to come in. And another thing I saw was a lot of head movement from Slim, just a lot of just herky jerky, very like. Mm-hmm. You know, window dressing. Just Tommy, yep. look at a lot of this stuff so I can find my way in. Throw your jab out so I can go under it. You know what I mean? And like you said, it had to happen then because even at the end of the first round, Slim had had some success, but he was starting to get tired. And I was like, oh, because I was watching this one in person. I looked at Rockman Jr. who was I was sitting next to him. I was like, Slim's dead. I was like, I hope you know that that he's got something left because I don't know how this second round's going to go. And I thought Tommy was going to put him on it, put it on him in the second. I was like, yeah. Oh, He's dead. Yeah. But Slim found a way, and he, like you said, he he had to do it then. But what he was doing so well was he was forcing shots out of Tommy that Tommy never really throws. Yep. Like, I've never seen Tommy throw the looping left backhand, right, like he was throwing it to try yeah. to take Slim's head off. You yeah. Know? I was used to Tommy throwing those nice straight punches down the pipe and being able to flurry off of, you know, the first action. That was something he did really well with Kenny. But and distance. Slim was slipping right underneath. Yeah, his distance, maintaining it. But Slim was doing a good job of baiting out shots from Tommy and then just slipping underneath, right, putting his head in his chest. And then as they broke the clinch was where Slim was landing big overhand shots. And he landed a couple, and the problem that Tommy had was he didn't recognize it. Yeah, he, he, he was so time, committed to that right hook, which is – he knew that that was going to be the shot to land, and yeah. he was fighting like uh, how do I put this? Like he was f- like he knew his game plan, and it's like he knew something that Tommy didn't. It's almost like they were in a different dimension, mm-hmm. and Tommy well, didn't see what, he didn't see what was coming. And Slim was like, "I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer." Yep. And he's like, I'm, I, I, I'm right here. He knows something that I Tommy didn't. It. Exactly. We saw. I was like, oh no. Like I, I like, when I was watching it, I was like, <laughs> you're like, no, 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 no. As soon no. as the second one happened, I was like, okay, this is clear. He knows what he's doing here, and Tommy doesn't. Yeah, Tommy. Tommy doesn't he coming. wasn't aware right of that. Over the top. And I was like, move. I was like, move, move, move. Like you know, those feet yeah. create the distance because Tommy does. Yep. You know, because of his range, he's gonna always do better at distance, and that's what I thought Slim was gonna. Going to try to do the inside you thing? You thought it was going to be that fight, right? Well, I didn't know if he was going to try it, but if he's going to be effective at it, because I, I'm assuming, you know, that's not 
his thing. You know, he likes to be at range, you know, mm-hmm. long extended punches, similar to Tommy. Um, but, you know, to have the guts to, to, to go for that game plan. Um, and, and to have the ability to do it. Man. As I was going to say, and to be able to execute it. Um, tired, fatigued, knowing that he's on his last gas tank. He's a dog. When they were saying he's, he needs to relax and calm down, that some, that's the, those are the guys you got to – that's what, like, boxing. Yeah. Boxing, like, especially combat sports, you talk about, like, killer instinct, right? I, I'm For me, it's not so much killer instinct. It's like a style. Right. It's more a style of fighting. Um, but when you're a little bit like, I don't give a damn, you know? <laughs> It, it, Slim's it's, got it. It's kill or be killed, though, because it, it works, and then it also gets you knocked out. So, um, yeah. no, but Slim, man, Slim's it works. Got it. He's, he's willing to play the game, and, and he got Tommy. Man, I'll, I'll ask this for you. Give me because I, I I spoke with with Temper today. He does he, like he's not phased by it at all. No pun no. intended, but he wants to come back and, and and keep this thing going. You know, he wants to keep doing it. So let's go on both sides here. Who do you see next for Slim? And for temper. Ooh. Well, I know they were talking about, dude, I might see um, KSI. You think that you think KSI is next for Slim? Jordy said the same thing, and I'm like, it, it, maybe it's just the way I look at like that fight, and I'm like, fair play, man. I, I can't deny it because no, Slim it's, just went out and had him, and he was in the co-main. Yes, he was in the co-main, and, and it's also, I think it's, the reason I say this, I think it's smarter for JJ to do that than to go straight to Tommy Fury or someone like that. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course, so, of course, of course. Yeah. why? And Slim will help sell. Slim, you know, he's going to do what he can do. And you know? because JJ called Slim out. He did. So, I when I heard that. that, I was like, that Slim. means it's on purpose. I like that. He's not saying that yeah. on accident. So, I'm like that. He's... Yeah. And obviously Slim's not gonna say no. So, no, obviously no, that I think Tommy. Um, that's the more. That's an interesting one for me. Like, who does Tommy take now? I know. Is it like the Kenny rematch? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Does Kenny still want that? Because it, this is the thing too that now that Kenny has shown his level, Kenny wants Woodley. You, okay, like bro. <laughs> Kenny. Oh, I've seen that. He's been calling Woodley out. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa, dude!" He said, "Let's do it." I, I love Kenny's mentality, though. I love it. Yeah, take take on anyone at this point. Why not, mm-hmm. man? Especially like like you know, regardless of how what we think of it, he's got to win. You know, he's he's won. Yeah, got, got just come yeah. off a win, so yeah, use that momentum. But I, I would like to see the Tommy rematch. I think that would be something both that they would probably both be down for. Um, but I also there's I think there's some other fights out there for Tommy depending on where like what weight he wants to fight at because he's always coming down in weight. I talked to him today. He's naturally an 85er, like 185 pounds. Yeah, 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 but bigger. And I'm wondering I'm trying to like, think, does who he else want to keep making that cut? You know, who else? Well, listen. How about this? Why not one of the I don't know the winner or loser of the Gibb and Austin McBroom fight? That's a good point. That Why oh, not that G- one? Gibb is a great one. Yeah, like give him, and I don't know. Again, I don't know if if that would be something Tommy would even look at, but you know, there that would be around his weight. And if you didn't want to do the Kenny, like if both those guys are like, oh, we already did that. Let's let's do something fresh. Yeah, you know, but that's something I think uh, would would definitely be interesting for Tommy. What about regardless? I was gonna say, what about Deji? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Oh snap, Deji! There... But here's the thing. I think, yeah, no. Listen, Deji, I, I could actually see that because. Because Deji's other options would be like Bryce Hall. Because he fought Wasabi, and about. that was kind of like same team type thing. Yeah. Kenny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenny, I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, No, I agree. That would be dope. I'm trying to think um, who else. Like, Because we're all around the same weight. You know, I don't know. There's not like. I know. I, if I'm Tommy, though, I'm like, screw all this cutting that weight stuff, man. Because he's cutting 14, 15 pounds to come down. Yeah. You know? I would say oh, Salt man. Poppy, but no. Ooh. I just stylistically no. I mean, Stay away, bro. <laughs> Stay the fuck away from this. Let's talk about that fight because, you know, we're all very excited about Salt Poppy. We're all excited about him, and I think we got a real superstar in our hands—a guy that it's completely different as far as like the way that we build a superstar. He could be our version of like, I don't even know who was like a guy that the people got behind. It wasn't necessarily a big talker, but he just stylistically is, is a freaking just. You know, electric battery, and that's what that's what Salt Poppy is, or, or a, a lightning strike, right? Yeah. So, 
obviously the the Andy Worski fight. Andy did not belong in there with him. We knew this. I think no everyone knew it without saying it. Um, but that thing. was the case, dude. Saul Papi has been I, when he's he was boxing since he was ten. When I first saw him, yes. I said, "Bro, you've been boxing in the Philippines." Brother. I know, I know. I talked to him on the other event, and he was like. I'm like you've been boxing. He's like, no. I was like, don't lie to me, bro. I I know yeah, what I've seen. Like, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm seeing. Yeah. You've been in the game for a while. Modern day Manny Pacquiao. And he was like, no, yeah. I'm when kidding. I was a kid in the Philippines, I was like, exactly, bro. That's that. Yeah. That's what I thought. He no, has the most experience. Yeah. He, him, and Dean. Dean is different because Probably obviously, got the most experience, yeah. yeah. Salt Poppy, hands down, has the most as a true influencer who then just came into boxing because Dean obviously was. Someone who want came is he's like a boxer, right? That's what he does. You know, like Salt Poppy, it was not a boxer. Is a box has trained boxing, but his influencer stuff had nothing to do. Correct. With and in the scene, yeah. out of everyone, including me, he has the most boxing experience. The most, yeah, the most by far. Here's, you know, so here's the thing though: what do you do with him now? Because you've given him two cans, right? And no disrespect to the guys he fought, but they were, you know. Halal Ham probably not necessarily as much as Andy, but they he was very much out of their skill range. So now you have him two and zero, oh, and you know he wants KSI. He wanted you. He wants Kenny. He wants anyone. I think him and Kenny. And him and Kenny would be a banger, bro. Bro, tell me not, a bro. Come on, banger. dude. That one. That one is a co-main event at least. Because now you have Salt Poppy that doesn't do you know a ton of talking and bro, what he said to Andy at the press conference was fire. That ending line, they said something and, and I wish Salt I was Poppy right next to me. Goes, I wish you a speedy recovery. Yeah. I wish you a speedy recovery. Mic <laughs> drop, bro. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Did you hear what Andy said about him by the way today about the knockout? Oh, thank you for I gotta get the breaking my up. nose. No, 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 no. He he, he <laughs> said some like like. Stuff you hear in folklore. Let me let me get the quote up. It was on Happy Punch. Shout out Happy Punch. I remember he said, um, like, thank you for not hit, hit, hitting me in the face, like hitting just me in the <laughs> temple. This is what he said. He said, quote, that knockout was brutal. It felt like someone came up behind me with a metal baseball bat. Oh, yeah. That was next level darkness. That's insane. Bro. A baseball bat, son. And the combination to end it was so good because, he again, we know that Saul Poppy knows what he's doing. But he bangs the left hand, and then instead of trying to end it with the right hook, he just reframes Andy's head like a windshield wiper, just went right back over, and then another left right down the right across the chin, and Andy said, "Oh, I'm in the Matrix." Okay, <laughs> flew back. But <laughs> bro, no, I like Salt wild. Poppy is like to me. He's to me. We got Gib, McBroom, anybody. That's a big one. And yeah. no one, Kenny, no one wants to fight him. Except I don't know. I think Kenny might. I think Kenny might fight. No, him. oh yeah, right. I Kenny, 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 yes. Kenny might actually fight. Kenny would him wants to fight anybody. He's a dog. Yeah, no, Kenny's a dog. He's like Tyron. So, he was not kidding about Tyron Woodley. I know he was legit. Like, yeah, get Tyron ready for me. That's madness. I love it though. I, I fucking love it. I do because he he has the mentality. He gained. has the mentality to. Yes, he and, and also levels. he was he was quick in there. I was like, ooh. I was gonna say his jab is probably like like my feet, I I, like my you know, feet, like my feet, my footwork, yeah. and and I started to turn up my footwork and my movement. We were we were moving. We weren't bro. leaving him. I was gonna say you weren't leaving him. We he were was there with we you. were moving, bro. Yeah, dude. We were on high speed, so I, faint, <laughs> freaking turbo, dude. <laughs> bro, I. I <laughs> That's <laughs> wrong cocaine speed. Yeah, I was for real. I, I did have to I did have to turn down the when I was like scoring it round by round, I did have to slow down the YouTube video, I'm not gonna lie to you. To try to see some of the stuff. Not because yeah. like you guys were on Dragon Ball Z mo which is funny by the way, I say Dragon Ball Z. You wanna tell the people what you tried to take your fiance and see while you were in London? Oh, the new Dragon Ball movie on freaking four D, <laughs> bro. Absolute death. She would have been puking and vomiting bro, everywhere. He <laughs> you come up to me, you're like, Yeah, I think we're gonna go see Dragon Ball. Mrs. Sensei flies up like a ninja in the night and says, "Uh, no, we're not." In 4D, it's like three screens in the in the chair. Yeah, you like, get the side, yeah. Moves and stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, going nuts. I would have been <laughs> sick though. I should have watched it myself. Facts, bro. 
But See, yes, no, this is why I lost. Poppy. Not enough Killer Instinct. Alana, it's your fault. I know. You didn't go Ultra Instinct. You didn't get to watch it, bro. But no, Salt Poppy and Kenny is a legendary fight. I would love to see that. Um, listen, he's the Grim Reaper right now. He's the one guy no one wants. And yeah. I think Kenny's going to be in that conversation, too, of guys that no one wants to see because now Kenny has shown his level. So, yeah. and Salt like, Poppy needs to beat. Say he needs to beat because he needs to beat someone who's He needs who's, to beat a guy. He needs to beat known. a real guy now. Correct. Yeah. He needs to be the guy that not only is known, but has some skill that, that's going to offer what I'm some saying. resistance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think Kenny might be that fight if, you know, they can get that lined up. And I know I know both those guys would be down to do it. So maybe, listen, you can call us the breakdown pod or your local matchmakers. I think. Hey, what about Deji? Today. What about Deji? Let's talk about Where, it. Where's he Deji go? and Fousey. Oh, Deji and man. Fousey, what did you think of the fight first? Give me that. Um, Deji just looked so comfortable and confident in there. So, um, and he was able to maintain it. I was actually watching the fight with, uh, I watched that fight with Kenny and team, his team there. The back, yeah. So it was like all team Deji, you know, obviously his, yeah. his actual coaches were out there obviously. Right. Um, but I was asking about like, how's his gas tank? How has he been doing Is it before the fight? How has he been looking at sparring? Like he, he's like, he's like, nah, he's bro. He's so, he's so ready. Um, but yeah. just to touch on this, I saw Daly's. Have you seen da- Daly's post? I did. The it coaching was really that was so sick, it was dope, bro. Wasn't it? It was so like cool. just the coaching, like the specificness of the coaching. Um, yeah. The shaking of the hands, the anchors that he was using in training mm-hmm. to prepare him, um, and, and and the words, the code words, and, and the, so the coaching dope. words, and to see Deji like execute a game plan. It wasn't just like him boxing the way he boxes, right? So like to execute a game plan. Um, and to continue to look for shots, you know, using his offense to and stay defense. Creative. To stay creative. creative and look for hard shots and setting Correct. up power shots. The hook, the outside hook to the straight down the pipe. Mm-hmm. You know, like with Wasabi, he was like ducking and clinching and but not looking for to land the big shots. Not looking for the offense. Not looking. Right. No, but this one he was just, you know. And, uh, you know, Fusi. He wasn't afraid, right? He wasn't afraid. He didn't let Fusi try to no. just come forward and, and throw his shots. His, his defense looked good. And, and he was super laser focused the whole time. To. He tried to step on his toes. You know, he, he tried to, especially at the start of the fight. And and I think Deji right away wanted to shut all that down and say, no, you know, we're not doing that again. And came out stupid aggressive. What I what I did like from Deji was he just looked so natural in there. It just looked mm-hmm. far more relaxed. It looked far more playful. It wasn't as nerve wracking to him. It didn't look like he had the weight of the world on his shoulders. It looked like he was just out there fighting, right? And that was something. The set honestly, it looked and like the a setups. Sparring session for yeah, him. the setups, the, the the level changes, the using punches to land other punches, not just throwing everything to land. Mm-hmm. So like he was doing that in the mix. That was it. Was just like uh, yeah. we're, we're we're seeing him at reaching his potential. You know, so we're like, that, mm, that Deji. level that we had always been told about. It's like it, it, that was the first time that outside of the people that watched him in the sparring room got to see that. And that's why it was such a shock to everyone to be like, where the fuck was I even said that? So I was like, who is that? And what the fuck did he do with Deji? Like, what, who is that guy? You know? Yeah, I think the I, weight, my favorite thing, the weight the thing is going to be important for him. I think he has to get down. But what are you going to say? Go ahead. My for, my favorite thing was the the combination that ended up being the one that threw like that made them throw the towel mm-hmm. when he had Fuzi on the ropes in the corner and he throws a beautiful. This was the the one time and again this is why I said his variety was so good. He didn't throw the hook to set up the straight. He threw the straight to set up the uppercut, then the straight behind it. So it yeah, was like, instead of the lead hand doing the work to start it, let's flip it. Let's go backhand. Boom breaks the guard. And then the hook, the uppercut, I don't even think landed, but it just did enough to get Fousey to pop his head. And then another straight leg down the pipe, and I was like, oh, my Lord. what That that was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I said in my video today I would have married it if it was a human. It, that was that beautiful. It was, you know, I would have I taken its hand in marriage. I would have taken that <laughs> left hand in marriage. Bro. Straight up. Yeah, man. I th- no, it, was, De- it was a great performance for him, man. I think Deji was going to be imp- – if he – me personally, like looking at his ceiling – um, obviously he took the fight with Fusi. It's a bit bigger. Yeah. But he has to, like, if he can, like, Kenny is, this one obviously mm-hmm. is a little bit heavier, but he's fighting close to, because he's, like, nearly six feet, to a weight that's pretty yeah. good for him to compete at. 
Yeah. You know, like he's no, the Deji needs to go down. If Deji, Deji can down. get to like the shape that he would be fighting if he was a fighter. Yeah. Then we're talking real potential because I think the the size factor, the speed, like for for example, Fusi didn't uh, not a lot of movement, uh, right. not not a lot of defense, right? So he was there to be had. So if you have somebody who's like bigger frame, but Deji's mm-hmm. weight, and he can move in and out, it's gonna you know Deji has, struggles with the speed factor that that type of like in and out type battle. Um, I, but I'm like, man, if Deji can get down. Come down to 150. I bet he can get to 150. That's what I'm saying. If he can come down, there's a lot of fights there for him. I, I like to I like to see him. To me, he's in more the, the, the mix of those guys that are down there. Um, yeah. And I think Deji can do some real – because he's only well, – he's fought Jake Paul, Vinny Hacker. He's not small dudes. No, no. You know what I I'm saying? I would say this. I would say I, I want him one more fight at, at that weight, and it's only because of the narrative and the rivalry and the massive fight that it is. We have to do Deji and Joe Weller. We have to. Oh, we have to. that's a we must, dude. If Joe wants to do it, because I don't know if Joe actually wants to fight or not. You know, there was a lot going on with him and KSI during fight week, but I don't know if he actually wants to fight. And I, and I, would, I would tell him it's probably the best move for him to go in, but it's also Deji can fucking crack. So I don't know. But if he wants to come down immediately, you know who can meet him there. Again, I don't know how much he weighs, but. The guy he called out, man, he said, Bryce Hall, let's do it. Yeah, see, that's a good, that's a great one there. Bryce Hall, yeah. that's a perfect example. And that's the thing, too, and, and I don't know how much, you know, of an underdog or whatever that Bryce would be, but these are the ways that you build Deji because he wasn't perfect, right? There's if, if I really wanted to be analytical and do the whole, like, oh, what is the things here? Deji still has a lot to work on, of course, right? Of right. course. Right, right, right. But – He's only been with Deji for, or he's only been with Daily for one full camp, and this is the results we're getting, you know, from inside the gym to in the ring on fight night. Jesus Christ! In the year, I don't know what we're gonna see from him. So, give him those fights to slowly build himself back. I'm don't telling you, give, if, yeah, no, don't if, go right to Gib. Don't go right Deji, to you know Austin or whatever. It's his feet. If that boy gets some freaking feet on him, like fast feet and some explosive yeah. movement, we're talking like yeah. wow, wow explosive yeah and tight that's what i'm saying Ooh, because his punches yeah, are punch tight he can punch out. tight to me i'm like man i just want to see him like move like jj yeah if he can if he could start to like put it together everything like his lower half defense, too correct and yeah. i think if his lower half gets there ooh, it's gonna be but yeah, he's, bro. he's in the right place i'll tell you that i was gonna say he's already going there so i i think bryce is probably the next best thing for him like i don't want to see him in, in salt poppy that could be it that fight two years from now could be a mega fight yeah yeah, yeah. Edgy and salt poppy two years from now let's go dude. keep you them away from each other for now here. yeah no for sure i'm telling you man dude that's, bro. yeah that's bryce give me give me bryce next. and i think bryce would be down for the, the challenge man fair play to the guy i, I like bryce a lot now I, I think he's he's turned over a new leaf with the with the community and i think he's a guy that works hard already so I, fair play i would like that fight but let's talk about the main events two in one night your boy ksi i want your honest thoughts this is a youtube title sensei's honest thoughts <laughs> ksi is two fights in one night. oh boy <laughs> What do you think, man? What would you think? Oh man, I, I this is my one joke where you can say Sensei's not being nice, but no, um, it's only because <laughs> Pineda is Hispanic, and um, we always it was a rough one to see, man. Like Hispanics are notorious for being the hardest on each other, you know? Right. Like okay. like the Latino yeah. thing. Like no one has made fun of me more than my mother. And my yeah. and my, my my dad and my family, you know what I'm saying? Right. right. Like, I've been like, you get bullied the most by your family. That's why, like, when I would go to school and someone goes to bully me, it's like you're not calling me anything that my mother doesn't call me. So, yeah. it's like you want to make fun <laughs> of my good. clothes. Like my mom would make fun of my outfit when before I go to school. Like you're wearing that. That's yeah. You're gonna get made fun of. You look you look like right. a nerd. So, but I was like, I called um. With my dad, I was like, I called him Pinata Head instead of Pineda. Ah, Pinata. Because <laughs> nice. Pinata, because like Pinata, it, it, it was perfect yeah. instead of Pineda. Uh, because yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. it was. He was there to be hit, man. He was there to be I hit. I 
And I think JJ might have been shocked too. Yeah. I think he's probably like, like a lot of people, like, he was like, were. "What, bro? Like this was not supposed to be this bad." Cuz at the at the open workouts though, when I I had a feeling I'm like, "Wait, is he being serious or is he trying to show something else?" putting combinations together. I was like, "Hold on a second. When he was what do- are we doing? Cuz I was with Wally. Wally was next to me. He was like, yeah. "Hold up, bro. What is he doing?" Cuz when he was doing when yeah. he was doing this, and he's yep. like, I've never seen someone. Was, man. Wally said, I, he goes, this is, Wally's obviously hilarious. But he's like, I've literally never seen someone act like they're going to get hit in shadow boxing. <laughs> like move like they're going to get hit. <laughs> like they're practicing being. Yeah, he's like, a he goes, he's take, literally like practicing cowering away. He's like, he's literally, and, he, and they end up doing it. He goes, but Wally said, he goes, he's literally practicing like he's going to get hit. I don't, like, <laughs> what is that? And I was like, yeah, you have a point there. It was like. He wasn't like throwing, more so he was just. <laughs> yeah, the do it. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, bro. I. You know, this is, we wait, wait, this is, like, wait. I don't think you understand. What the re- One of the reasons I don't want to fight too is because we need to be together on these things again. Because <laughs> I don't think you realize how more enjoyable this whole event would have been bro, if we were a tag team <laughs> oh in this God. event, bro. I swear, I'm <laughs> telling you. They need listen, misfits. You have you have an event coming up in October. It's not on pay per view. It's in Sheffield, London. Just get us we need there. The breakdown. Boys Just get us on there, bro. This show, dude. I Commentary. was Terry. Dude, the open workouts. The, the, but like exactly, Panetta, and then swarms, swarms. I had no issue with because he. That was the expe- talking about two weeks. That was the expectation. Yeah. The, right, bro. Twenty thousand people against KSI. Yeah. Who's, you're supposed to get knocked out. You, there's no need for Swarmers to be there. Does not need no. to do this at all. Nah. So I'm like, okay. Mans was Mans was hitting the three sixties. The three sixty spin thing, because that dude is, you know, his adrenaline's up. He's just like out there, like he has no idea what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is he supposed to do? You know, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah. he, he can't. He's struggling. He's just pure, like. Bro, like that's the thing that was kind of rough. It was kind of rough to watch because it's supposed to be a boxing event. I'm like, this is not good for YouTube boxing right here. That was my honest no, opinion. No, no. I'm that like, this was, is not good. This is this needs that, to end. That was a tough one to open. JJ yeah. just finished this, so we and that's how I think that JJ felt that way. Like, right. bro, this needs this this is not good. This needs to end. Yeah, this is yeah, not yeah. going well. You know. Um, and but, then and then Swarms was four cornering him. He was just. I know. You know. I'm like they should have just you know called what? I will it. Say this. It's like. It's tough for for JJ to fight guys that don't want to fight him because that was clear those guys did not want to fight him. Yeah, and it's tough to look good sometimes in those situations. Yep, where yep. You just you're like, how am I supposed to do anything? This guy is just running away from me. But and and I I have to be honest here too. You know, KSI in the little moments we saw him did have some of those old habits pop back out, which I expected to be honest. It's been three years. Yeah. I expected that. I saw some things I liked. I did see better balance. I wish I would have seen a little bit more of cutting off the ring from him, just a little bit, so that he didn't get four-cornered and he didn't just have to chase swarms around while he was doing the Mario Kart spins. But while he was doing that, I did see some things I liked. He still has that damn power, man. Jesus Christ, he still has those oh, the right the hand. Power, his, but he his rips. His, he just rips it, dude, from the hip. Dude, the first one he threw at Pineda, Pineda felt, acted like he got shot. In his in his back, right? Uh, I couldn't believe like, it. Uh, when I saw that, that's when I was like, "Oh no!" I was people next to me, and they go, "What the, like, what is this?" Because I, that was the that was the real stain was, yeah. Uh, because we expected we expected a boxing match. We expected a pro boxer. We expected right? some we expected. resistance. That's what we expected, right. you know. And then a some ad, some adversity. And right. he JJ hit him. And he does the whole, you know, the arch of the back, and then ah, like the face. The he was doing the he was doing the forty year old. I've been sitting in my chair for too long. Like, ah. And then looks <laughs> the looking at the ref being like, because I think he said because it was like a kidney shot or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and no, then one of the times he got the audacity was crazy. At one point, he didn't even get hit with a shot. He just looked at the ref and took a knee. I was like, this is crazy. I know, <laughs> and just, then. Because he was ducking and JJ don't care, so he's just coming over the top, and yeah. then he's like, and I, I was screaming left hook. I'm like JJ, where's that left hook you've been practicing, dude? 
Because that's what I'm saying. Pineda was just he just needed to touch the body with his back hand, and Pineda would yep. you know like that, and then just that left hook he's been Yo. practicing. He could have got. I was out because I I wanted JJ to get that that finish that like knockout and not some like that's weird one, stoppage you know. You know? Um, that's the one thing I think was the sour taste if you left this event and you're like, ah, you know, I wish if there was anything you, I wish we could have seen, you know, the, the, the full, the full on KO. And I was even looking for the, and this is another thing I, I you know, if I am going to pick apart, you know, KSI stuff here, the shot selection was interesting because it just, he just continued to go to that overhand off the jab. Yeah, and it was just smacking the back of his head behind the (laughs) ear, just clubbing him with it. I was like, because he's turning away, you know. The fucking uppercut, brother. The uppercut is there, just underneath the ear. You know (laughs) what I'm saying? But he was just he was in love with that. What happens is you start because you you hit you hit the bag with that thing, and you feel how much heat is on it, and you're like, I can end him right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but it just it was just take another one. It seemed I'm not gonna lie. It seemed like a parody because. Yeah, Pineda like his frame, his the, the way that he looks, you know, like that. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to go. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. T- t- <laughs> Bro, okay, I'm gonna say this, and I'm not gonna say any more about his his physical features. But then when they did the weigh in, right, and he gets on the scale and he's flexing. And he's flexing with no meat on his actual arm bones. There's nothing. It's just bones and skin. But he's flexing in his arms. If you can't hear, if you can't see me because we're in audio form, basically my arms are shaking uncontrollably. He was doing this. It was shaking. I no didn't flex see that. Was happening. No. no, his his his. He was trying. You know, like, <laughs> if you really flex and you'll shake. He was flexing, but no, nothing. No, there was no flex happening. It was Damn just it. His fists were shaking back and forth. Damn it, Pineda. And then. <laughs> the other thing was the uh, I felt like I think is it Charlie Chapman that whole clip when he's like, like it's like a parody in the boxing and he's skinny and runs and he like taps the guy and he's like dancing <laughs> and he runs around and he taps <laughs> like he does that and then just <laughs> <laughs> we gotta put that clip in here so just, <laughs> like <laughs> bro because oh, the fr- the frame he didn't have the look no and he didn't look and like the thing is you can only boxing. not have that look. If you're good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, remember that um, there was another boxing match. It was like, and the dude was like doing, like it was just, it was a dude and he was like, he had like a really, it was an actual professional boxing match. It might've been on his own or top rank or whatever. And he's like, had this really awkward style and it like looked like he yeah. was almost street fighting and he was like really bouncy. I'll have to send it to you. It reminded me of, uh, it reminded me of that too because he didn't have the physical oh, look. Wait, was it the kid that, he, he looked like he never boxed, and he was like legitimately like doing one of these numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. That's I've what I'm saying because it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're like, because he doesn't physically look like a boxer, and he doesn't box like a boxer. Right. So, yeah. like we expected, I don't know about you, but I expected Pineda to look like a boxer, and you have a handful of influencers who would have all outperformed Pineda. They would have stopped him. I think everybody from your fight up who, would who have won. Stopped. Yeah, I mean, shit. Now there's a even you know Poppy and, and Dean probably would have stopped. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, for, there yeah. Was, everybody that won their fights plus you and Temper would have stopped him. So it's like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I I, I don't think that 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 was probably in retrospect the best idea but it but was like what is jj kind of i i don't like, you know, like it's not so much i blame jj i kind of i feel bad for jj no i don't and that's i don't have like, like a JJ picked his fight no, i feel you know, i he, the, the, he, the feeling i get is i feel i'm like damn i feel bad for him because this is not what he was thinking was going to happen of course not and of course not and that's the thing too is like you know alex unfortunately gets the injury can't fight JJ's kind of stuck with it, and he's trying to make the best of it. But two guys in there that don't have, have never, it seemed like, fought anybody legitimate and are sprinting around the ring. It looks kind of like you know a circus show a bit, but that's not his fault. And I thought he saved a lot of face with his post fight interview because he didn't just go straight to the "Let's go, Jake," because that would have been the worst thing he could have done. Right? Yeah, is that the people see that, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Yeah, give me Jake," when you know. We're going to have some time here to talk about Jake in the last part. He's going to be fighting a legitimate striker, right? So you can't you can't go there. But he did yep. go to some of the people on the card, which I thought was the right move. He said, yes. you know, I like 
the Slim fight. I, I don't even know. Did he say Salt Poppy's name? I don't know if he did or didn't. He did not. But I don't think so. If he did, it, yeah, good idea, to be honest, because Salt Poppy's fucking dangerous. And it's a great he said, one, though. Um, no, it's a fun fight. It's a fun fight. But if you're getting to the Jake Paul fight, you're going to need to take that risk, and I, I 100% understand. And that's why he also said uh, Tommy Fury's name. Now, yeah. we just talked about a second ago, and I'll let you talk here on, on what you think he should do next. Who do you think KSI should fight? You think it's going to be Slim? I think so. I think yeah. I think I mean, it's, it's a, a good, Or, and this is another interesting thing, he said the winner of Austin and Gibb, which doesn't I was rule just, out Gibb. I was just going to tell you that. I was like, bro, what is going on? I heard that, and I was like, I got to get out of this game, bro. What is going on here? I know. He I said, know. Gibb, that, seems, that seems very weird. Yeah. The comments, I went straight to the comments. They're all like, Gibb? Yeah, Wait, and bro. they've sparred a bit, so something's going on there, you know. And he's been saying Gibbs' name a little bit more than. I'm like, is there something? Usual. I don't know. Is there like there's like some falling out? You know, I just think that they've probably they've sparred, and and maybe KSI likes the way those spars went, or I don't know. But yeah, but they're like the fact that he said like his name, mates, bro. I know they're boys, right? They're they're boys like that. That's what I. So I don't know. That's what. That was the consensus. They were training together. You know, Leon and Vidal trained. Were tr- Vidal was training Gib first. Yeah, but first, yeah. Got yeah. him introduced, and I don't know. It's not like a because like there's like people you just when you when you know people like I would never fight Deji. I personally wouldn't fight or KSI. You would never fight Tommy. Tommy, I wouldn't even fight KSI. Yeah. Like there's yeah. when when you don't know somebody, it's easier. You know, and yeah. then I've known somebody. It'd be very difficult. Like even K- KSI at that level, it'd be very difficult to 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 pull that, to say because when I when I know someone, it's just so. You know, we're talking like Deji, those yeah, guys. Like, yeah. it'd be very, very, very um, difficult. Like I saw like KSI's parents in the elevator. Oh my gosh, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so happy. We're, ta- we're they're talking about Deji and how far has come, and to see JJ do this now. Oh my God, Sensei! Like the the friends. Of like yeah. the sidemen, but they, that's why the Gibb thing, dude. I don't. Is he? Odd, man. I, I don't it's know. Odd. I don't know if he's just because JJ has been seemed very. How I put this? He's seemed very calculated with what he's been right. saying. Right. He's been very specific with what he's been saying. So I don't know if he's. I kind of get the vibe that he's just saying that, um, because he thinks that Gibb's gonna win. Because he knows he's either saying it because he thinks Gibbs gonna win, or he's wait. Saying no, what am I saying? I'm saying if, if he thinks Austin might win, that's what I'm saying to set yeah. up the Austin fight. Because I'll yeah. fight Austin if because the whole reason he wanted to fight Jake too was to de- avenge Gibb. Remember that? Right. Yeah. He, he was so pissed because Gibb just got knocked out. Yeah. Well, you're gonna want to knock out Gibb. You know what is that gonna? I don't know, man. I th- I think we should keep our eye on it though because it is interesting. And that that, was, that could... stuck out to me. Like, what is that about, dude? You want to talk about a storyline, though. Friends turned competitors is one for the ages, too. It's always a good recipe. It's not great for their relationship, and, and that's something that I don't know, you know, we'll have to see. But Maybe it's just for the money. Back your or mind. is it one of those things like, yo, bro, I can get you a bag. Right, right. I but we'll, we'll fight. Some, some, yeah, exactly. But, but it'll you know. Be a bag. We'll keep an eye on it, though. We'll keep an eye on it. But I do think Slim is probably the best option for sellability, a bit more legitimacy, and it's not quite Tommy Fury yet because I do think he needs one more fight before he goes to that next level. Mm-hmm. And know, people thought his they were thinking temper KSI, right? So it's yeah, not. And I don't. Th- I think fight. people would so be. Like, I think people would really be like, I don't know. Slim has got what it takes. Yeah, he, you know. Yeah, yeah. He he has that convincibility to be like, shit, man. He might actually go out there and knock KSI out, or you know, whatever, whatever it could be. But and and KSI is going to need that too. He's going to need that test. And I think he does need one more fight before he ascends to the Tommy Fury level. And then at that point, should he win both those? My worry is that we don't even get to the Jake fight. That's my worry. Is that, yeah. You know, watching KSI and seeing some of the same things I'd seen previously, I'm like, and then seeing the level of the YouTube boxing seed do this, I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Are we going to get there? Because now, and let's transition into this, and, and we'll end the pod on this. We have a fight announcement for Jake. It's probably coming today or yesterday as this fight goes out. Like, I knew this. Shout out to, uh, well, I probably shouldn't say who told me. But I've known this for about a week now. You can, like, and I've blur been trying it out. to hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're going to do the Logan thing and blur it. Jake's fighting Anderson Silva. Bro. What the fuck? 
I've been. I, I, I wanted to see this fight. I've said it. Like I was this like, yes. Yeah, they the had talked about. It. I was like, come on. I said, I think it's a one, great man. fight. I think it's a great fight for Jake. He doesn't have to go to the boxer yet, but you get somebody right. who's older but can box, and it gets to test and Jake's box, box. Can test Jake's boxing ability without having him to fight an absolute like monster. Yeah. Um, and it's a huge name. It's Anderson Silva. We're talking one of the goats. You know, if Jake beats Anderson Silva, bro, the fight game's done. Everybody should retire. It's over, bro. Like he's Ander- now snatched the throne. Bro. Anderson Silva is a big one because he's it's freaking quite, Anderson like, you, Silva. You can argue he's one of the great, like the. You could argue he's the goat. You it's like beating. It's like it's fighter. literally like him being GSP. Honestly, you know the the biggest deal was made about Leon Edwards beating Kamara Usman last week or two weeks ago. You want yeah. to know why that is? One, because Kamaro is a, a fucking monster, dominant. But because Kamaro Usman was on the cusp of breaking one Anderson Silva's 16-fight win streak. That's crazy. People forget that he won 16 fights in the UFC. How ridiculous is that? Straight. And what's crazy is that he fought, that was after Pride and Strike. Like, that was, Anderson was, was in. Prime, we were getting back back half of Prime Anderson. We weren't even seeing Prime Anderson. In the UFC. Which is crazy. Bro, Pride Pride Anderson, not Prime. Pride Anderson was throwing upward elbows and knocking fools dead. Levels. Insane. Yeah, but you you beat Anderson. That's a big one. It, regardless, like, yes, he's 47 years old. And no, he's not 30-year-old Anderson or 28-year-old. You know, he's not that guy. And, Damn, and that, that is, guy that is a bro, that is up there. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So he's 47. <laughs> And, and that's a big deal, right? It is. It's a big deal. This man's but, almost 50, bro. <laughs> grandfather. But, you know, listen. You know, the hell is going on, thinking. man? The hell is going <laughs> on, bro? Bro, Jake Paul's fighting Anderson Silva who's almost 50, bro. This is... My God, it was happening. Dude. Get him out the nursing home, bring him in. But bro, listen, like who else? Who else was was a better option at this point for Jake? Like you couldn't get Nate yet. No, Tommy it's a, was two it's strikes, a, and it's we've a seen great how Jake swings the bat. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect for him. And um, yeah, listen, this fight is is quite literally for the sake of of all humanity in the fight game. And if Jake wins this one, you literally you can't tell him shit. At that point. And I don't know. He goes right into a Nate fight, probably. Or maybe the Tommy fight again. Or, I don't know. Something in the pro boxing ranks. But this is what I was going to say about the pro boxing thing. The Anderson skill is better than any 3-0, and 2-1. and one, Unless they're like a Olympian, you know what I'm saying? Like 300 amateur fights. Anderson is better than a lot of the guys that you would want to see him fight as a quote-unquote pro boxer. Even right now. Yeah. Right? Even yeah. right now. The guys that you would want him to see. Not every pro boxer, not guys that would rip Jake's head off, no. But the guys that you would, you know, put him in there with, the inexperienced low level pros like the Tommy Furies, I quite honestly I think that Anderson is a better boxer than Tommy Fury is. Yeah, he I, I he, think that. I can't believe I remember um Silva beat freaking Junior, man. J C C Junior, multi world champ, brother. And he beat him. While also doing heel taps in the middle of the fight, did you see that? Do you remember him doing yeah, that? He was standing yeah. there, touch his thing, boom, heel tap, hook, jab, whatever. Like he had, like he was playing around and won that fight. So yeah, we just hope that we, we just hope that you know, with with fighters as they get older, they just go. I know. Rank, I know. Bro. You know. So we just hope the that. Chin, you that's get the thing Augusta too. Win, and he and, and he likes dance. like he likes to play. So yeah. I wonder the is it gonna be. I think what's important for me to think about that is the ounce of the gloves. Are they going to do – how is it going to well, be they're sanctioned? they're going in tens, bro. They're going to go in tens. Anything so, that Jake does is going to be how do I yeah. knock someone dead, you know? Can you imagine Anderson is playing with Jake? He's just loose arm doing his heel taps, and Jake throws a jab right hand and knocks him fucking silly. Well, I can see it. Like, with the whole, I can see like another Weidman type thing, another Chris Weidman I like see, lean back bro. and he gets clipped. Type thing, not yeah, so, no, I could see not him getting starched, I but see something him like doing that. What he did to Tyron, I'm, I legitimately can see him. Like I can see Jake getting outboxed for eight rounds because this will probably be at least eight rounds the way Jake's fighting now. And on the other end of it, I could see Jake slumping him after 
four or five. Like I, I just genuinely, that's what makes this fight interesting to me. I genuinely don't know how it's going to go, but that's, I mean, it's a massive announcement. Jake wins that one. Massive, and dude. that's the hard part. If you want the KSI and Jake fight, if Jake beats Anderson Silva, it's always going to be a cat and mouse game. Bro, like, what a W KSI for Jake to gap, get a fight bro. with Anderson, bro. Bro. I wonder what the bag is like for Anderson. Cause it's gotta be massive. You'd have to think massive and they're doing it. They're doing it in Phoenix, Arizona, oddly enough. I don't know why, but that's that's the spot. Bro, never. No sons, I guess. I don't know. In a million years would I think that we'd be talking about this, bro. Befuddled, bro. You're just completely amused by this. He's boxing Anderson Silva. This is where we're at. This is where we're at, man. Anderson Silva was trying to get a boxing match with Roy Jones Jr. back in his heyday, and he couldn't get that. Was a super fight that they couldn't make, but Jake's like, uh, hold my beer. I own my own promotion, bro. Yeah. Let me go ahead and get Anderson Silva out of the nursing home to come fight me. Okay. What's it's madness, the- bro. It's madness. But that's our podcast. We had some other stuff to talk about, but I think we'll probably leave it there and we'll pick up next week. Um Yeah. Yeah, some fun stuff going on in the YouTube boxing scene. Obviously, my man Sensei going out with a bang, but Coming back into the commentary scene with the same. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, the Gibb and Austin fight. We'll preview that one for you guys. When is that? When is that again? September 10th. And I might go. If I don't go, I know. I might go. But if I don't, we might do a little co-watch party on the Way Concept channel, brother. So if you're free on Saturday the 10th, come swing by. The 10th? Watch party. What time is it at? Yes. Good question. I didn't even know. and they, they just sold tickets. They just started selling tickets. So I don't even know if they know what time it's supposed to be on at. But the 10th is, semi, is sem, it's semifinals. So. Oh, that's right. You got football. That's right. I was going to say, I win that. Nate I go, and Hamzat Chemaev, too. Uh, I win. I, we win that. We go to the chip. So, But um, it's probably at we'll 6. See. We'll probably see. at 6 Eastern. So I should be good. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Come Either home. way. <laughs> I score a touchdown. I'm just okay. running home after that. Just, <laughs> I'm coming, boy. <laughs> Gotta get on the street. <laughs> but yes, you guys uh, stay tuned for that one. We're going to preview that next week. Thank you all again for subscribing to the Breakdown Podcast. Now, with Sensei being out of the ring, at least for this moment, we are going to be upping the levels on this podcast. I can yes. guarantee you that. I'm talking more interviews, probably and possibly more live commentary gigs hopefully you know we're working on that Mm -hmm. and live in-person interviews you know real and wills fair play to them they gave us a little blueprint we might we might have to take some of that and run with it especially on the football side because we're really going to try to delve into that too but yeah it all starts next week make sure you subscribe once again here at the breakdown podcast on youtube are we closing on is close man we're We're like 600 away bro 600 away let's come on people I know. I Look know. at me. I got, a, I got a black eye. I'm boxing. I'm doing all this crap. Get it I'm together. Saying, 20K. Taking the abuse for the breakdown team. Come on, guys. Hit that sub button. And make sure you subscribe. Uh, leave us a rating and review on our audio version. Yes, it's my turn. I understand. I'll get it together. Guys, please let me do it. And also, make sure you subscribe over to our TikTok. We're going to start actually posting on that bad boy. Yes. Uh, and on our Instagram. We're going to start doing a lot of the socials. So make sure all that stuff you're following. But... That's episode number 15. 15. It's the breakdown, boys, and we are out. How will I sit up in the nose, please? How will I stop until they know me?